This video got blocked by YouTube. That's right, this was supposed to air last Sunday, and it had copyrighted music on it, which I was fine not to monetize, but it was a type of music that YouTube just blocked. So I don't have the live footage here, I cannot present it, because I literally can't post it, but I have the next best thing and the game. So welcome to today's video. I played like stockfish. My performance was of a 3200, better than Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> And so, yes, this is why you should learn opening theory. This is why I advocate for you to, if you're at that level where you're starting to lose right above a, a thousand and your opponents are edging you out out of the opening, this is my advocacy for you to try to learn opening theory because I played opening theory that we learned together on stream, the Anishigiri course of E4, and we played about 50 moves of theory here, and it dramatically helped me against this 2500 to uh, claim the victory. So let's see this game. In this game, we have an E4, E5, which is the Italian game. And after Bishop C5, the Anishigiri course is C3 and D3. Now these can be transposed in a different move order, but this is usually the position that we come up with. And in the course, black castles, white castles, and then d5. And this is the notorious line that we looked at in depth. And here, white is supposed to take, knight takes, and then rook e1. White is threatening this pawn, but not really. Let's say bishop goes to e6 instead of g4 like in the game. We can't really take this. This is an opening trap. Because now, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, and bishop takes f2. Sacking a bishop. King takes, and then queen f6 picks up the exchange here, making the white pieces lose material. So we would never do this, and after bishop g4, I know better because I studied, and I played knight d2. Knight b6, and here theory is h3, but I just learned it, and so I was a bit rusty and played bishop b3 instead, which is a little bit of a mistake, but not that much. Usually lines in this... Uh, happen with h3, bishop h5, and then bishop b3. Queen takes d3 is completely normal, and then white usually takes here on e5, sacking the queen. In favor of an exchange, there's a possible different lines you can take here. You can go to f5, you can even go queen g3 if you're feeling the spice of this pinned pawn. Though none of that happened though, I played bishop b3 and now a5, and then h3 now, I remember theory again, and this is back in it. Knight e4, a4, this is a, a line invented by Mamidyarov, who is a super GM from Azerbaijan. And here a4 is threatening my bishop. I think I could have taken a pawn here, but the pawn is not really worth it, says the engine. So I played the best move, bishop c2. Rook a5, and this is a typical idea I play here, is b4. So the idea here is that you fork these two pieces to force, literally force, the meme forced en passant. <laughs> And en passant happens, which is a great move here, and I get to reactivate my bishop along this beautiful diagonal that was not possible before. And so my opponent here plays the blunder as we are out of theory. I got out of theory first, but here is the real blunder, bishop g6. And can you find the tactic here? I found it quickly, but I didn't like initially the compensation I would give to the black pieces, and that is... The tactic is knight takes c5, which attracts this rook to c5, and now we have a beautiful skewer of rooks on that little brochette. The kebab is looking very, very nice here. And so black can take here on c3, which I had calculated, but not only that, after I take on f8, they can take a second pawn with rook takes d3 attacking my queen, forcing the tempo of my queen moving. And now after taking back my bishop, it's not that obvious that I have such an advantage. I'm up the exchange, but the black pieces have a pawn for that exchange. Uh, two pawns actually, Eesh, not looking too good, Brav, but I can take this pawn. So just one pawn at the end of the day. Knight takes and then queen takes. And here I'm looking okay, I have a small advantage as you can, as you can see, rook d6 and I go queen e8 putting pressure on this queen, pinning this queen, right? And my idea, yeah, rook d1 in the future maybe, or just progressively advancing my pieces. My plan here was actually to go f4 and f5 to create what happened already in the game. This was a three minute blitz game, so don't take it as, you know, like a classical game in which I killed my opponent, but it's a very nice game altogether, and it has some, some, 
some some good things, some good things. So my opponent plays the blunder, bishop f5, which gives, this should have been a blunder, by the way, by chess.com. This gives checkmate in two. Pause the video to solve the problem, and if you already saw it, good thing that you did, you did your tactics for the day. Bishop takes f7, and this pinned queen is already serving in this tactic, forcing this king to go to h8, and then we would just pick up this queen with checkmate, and here my opponent resigned. And the game review says I got a 97.5 out of the 23 moves that we played, which means that I did one, two bad moves. Two bad moves out of 23. Not too bad. And I played like Stavros. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a terrific day on me.